Hey, Viola Rules here, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. So we're still doing the cross-examination of Old Bag, and I'm pretty sure this is the problem statement, and I think I know what I have to present to it. I'm pretty sure I have to present the evidence that Gungshu brought up earlier, which is the autopsy report. Yeah, strangled with a scarf and then stabbed with a knife. Yeah, I think this is the problem, because if he was strangled, she should have heard that, right? I know there's something about the stabbing of poor Juan for this one that's incorrect. It's either the autopsy report or it's the knife itself. I'm going to say it's the knife itself just because it seems a little bit more relevant right now. Okay, that was correct. Cool. Please take a look at this. Yeah, so it's a knife. Big deal. If you're trying to scare me with that, I'll have you know it won't work. No, no, that's not my intention at all. That's the knife that was used in the murder, correct? Your Honor, do you know why this piece of evidence is important to this case? You don't even have to ask, because it's the defendant's- because the defendant's fingerprints are on it. Is that what you're driving at? That is exactly what I'm driving at. What are we driving at? And whose car are we driving? <laughs> If Mr. Ongard was really in this Nickel Samurai costume at the time of the murder, then it's impossible for his fingerprints to have been left on this knife. Actually, he would have wiped all previous fingerprints on this knife right off. Does his costume have gloves? I actually didn't pay attention to that. Oh, that's right! The Nickel Samurai wears gloves, doesn't he? Okay, apparently he does. I did not notice that detail. He probably took his gloves off before he began the stabbing. Why would he do that? And why would he do something like that? To leave his prints on the murder weapon? There's no way he would do something like that. Actually, that's an interesting thought. What if he did do that because he's trying to save the person who actually did this? Trying to take the fall for someone else. However, there is one possibility. Then let's hear your possibility. It's very simple. The defendant went to the victim's room while in costume as the, sickle, as the nickel samurai. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. He was probably just going to relax and talk with the victim about the stage show. Which is why he took his gloves off. That could have been it, maybe. Hmm, but the murder still did take place. It's well known that the defendant and the victim had bad blood between them. I feel like most of it was a publicity stunt, though. Hmm, yes, I have heard of that. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say about Mr. Edgeworth's theory? So let me get this straight. Edgeworth's theory goes like this. When the defendant went to the victim's room, he had no intentions of killing him. Now, up to this point, are there any problems with this theory? There are no problems, there's a contradiction, think about it one more time. I'm going to say there is a contradiction, because there has to be one. This theory contains something, contradicts something in an earlier testimony. What are you babbling about? To be completely honest with you, I don't know. Now, for argument's sake, let's suppose Mr. Ongard was the killer. If that's the case, I think it's impossible for the killer to have gone to the victim's room without intent. Without intent because of... Uh, because of the knife belonging to the hotel, right? This knife, this was used by Mr. Ongard at, at dinner. E yes, we did establish that. Which means that if my client was, in fact, the killer, then he brought this knife with him when he went to visit Mr. Corita. I suppose. However, you just said it yourself. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. If that were true, then why would he bring a knife? He wouldn't, would he? Hmm. Which means, Mr. Edgeworth, your theory was flawed from, suppo from supposition one. And one more thing. If the murderer was wearing the costume at the time of the murder, then there should be glove marks left on the knife. Glove marks? Which means the defendant's fingerprint shouldn't be all over it like bees on a hive. 
Okay, we have a very sound argument, it sounds like. And that brings me to my final point. This knife was planted by the real killer to hide their identity and mislead us. Uh, order! Order, I say! Order in the court! Was this knife really planted by the killer? Why would the murderer do such a thing? To hide the murder method to frame Matt on guard. Um, I guess to frame, right? Because that's what makes sense. Though I think it's the first one in a way, or something. It's to frame my client, Mr. On guard, of course. To frame? Uh, aren't you forcing the interpretation just a little too hard on this one? But we just established that the witness saw the Nickel Samurai in costume. Well, supposedly. And if that were true, then there shouldn't be a single fingerprint on this knife. Witness? Well, old bag, <laughs> looks like I made your life a tiny bit more difficult, huh, Edgy? Mm. Witness, did you or did you not really see the Nickel Samurai? Well, I guess at first I might have forgotten, but... Are you saying you mixed up Mr. On Guard with the Nickel Samurai, his character on TV? I mean, I can't really do anything about that. Look, I was waiting around in front of the doors because, well... Oh, I wasn't waiting around for the Nickel Samurai, that's for sure. She's a Jammin' Ninja fan. Obviously, she wasn't waiting for the, for the Nickel Samurai. All right, then. Who were you waiting around for, then? <laughs> That's top secret to anyone outside of security. I have a feeling that you were waiting for Mr. Wong Karita. Am I correct, witness? <laughs> the way you think, you are a sad amateur with a terrible case of nearsightedness. Amateur? Me? What am I an amateur of? So Old Bag was waiting around in front of the victim's room. But it doesn't sound like she was waiting to catch a glimpse of Mr. Karita. Maybe... Phoenix, maybe the Old Bag was waiting around for that person. Hmm, if it's who I think Mia's hinting at, it's certainly possible. Miss Old Bag, you were waiting for this person to come out of the victim's room, weren't you? Um... I don't really know. Uh, the only other person who's relevant to this case who would have gone into that room for any reason is Adrian Andrews. Who is this person? This is Adrian Andrews, Mr. Ongard's manager, who was having a uh, flirtatious relationship with Mr. Carita. But why would the defendant's manager be in the victim's room? It seems that this is the latest rumor in circulation, Your Honor. Hmm. Oh, this is... Well, this is... Hmm. I see. The judge seems to be really into the article, if it can be called such a thing. Then this manager with the initials AA, are you saying it's... Adrian Andrews. Without a doubt, the witness thought so as well. Oh, because she's such a fangirl, <laughs> she was trying to take out Andrea and Andres, at least threaten her. <laughs> hmm, looks like you found me out. Well, that's fine. I can throw away this whole sworn to confidentiality stuff. Witness? What in the world are you? Watch out, Phoenix. I've got a bad feeling about this. A very bad feeling. I got some information. Some very secret information from a certain source. So that's why I was doing my own little investigation. In secret, of course. But what for? Oh, just for myself. Personal reasons and all that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, how will you proceed from here? I really don't want to do this, however I cannot simply let this point slide. I see. Very well then, witness, please testify about this secret information. Get ready. This is going to take the wind out of you youngins. I'm sure we're all capable of handling this. Really, it's not like we're ten years old. We'll see. Secret information. That on guard is one evil, evil man! He thought he could ruin poor Juan by causing us huge scandal. So to do that, he sent his own manager to get in close with Juan. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. 
Oh, and this is top secret, you got that? Nobody else but you and me know yet, okay? And, you know, the whole courtroom, but... Okay. The defendant sent his manager? What a distasteful topic for this court! What? Nobody's above gossip! And this isn't... And isn't there saying, the truth is never pleasant? Never heard that one before. Mr. Edgeworth, what about this Adrian Andrews person? We have looked into this matter and found that the truth the article proposes is, in fact, baseless gossip. Hmm, but should this be true, then this proves that the defendant did bear ill will towards the victim. So this means I have to smash this rumor once and for all. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Be careful. The old bag seems rather excited right now. That's right! On guard is nothing but your average fool, foul-blooded youth. Well, as the old saying goes, you gotta burn old bags with fire. I have never heard that one before. Okay. Time to burn up the afterburners and hit the highway to the danger zone. What in the world are you saying, Phoenix? Let's just go to the cross-examination, which I'll do in the next episode. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you all next time.